Hi everybody, welcome to the podcast episode in the Go Unedited playlist. So this is the 18th podcast episode and it's been 4 months since I made my last podcast episode. And since then I was wondering like um, which topic should I choose and what kind of insight should I bring in and share with you guys. So um, I also thought about making a video so that it is available on my YouTube channel. But then I thought no, because just because all my podcast episodes are completely unedited and there's lots of research, lots of uh, study material and there is a complete script to what I say and which is uh, handwritten. So I thought no. Uh, right now I can't take that risk because I'm not prepared for it so let's uh, try it some other time and let's continue with the audio only so uh, today's topic is uh, does stress uh, affects psychotic disorders is there any relation between stress psychotic disorder and autoimmune disorder okay so literally everybody to this day it has um, some kind of autoimmune disorder so i started uh, reading about it and i found that yes stress does work as amplifier for all the chronic illness and because it is part of all the chronic illness, where does the chronic worry start? I always thought it starts in the brain. But, but I was amazed to see that it also starts in the gut. It depends where it starts. And if a person has unhealthy bacteria in the gut, which is also called dysbiosis, then it, it interacts, it interacts with the immune cells and it makes inflammatory cytokines which goes across the brain blood barrier. Now why am I getting so scientific about everything? Just because you know, if I come and I say, okay, yeah, I found out and this is related to this, you will definitely ask that no, give me some research, some knowledge talk about some findings and hence I am bound to use some scientific terms. So what happens when these inflammatory cytokines uh, crosses the brain blood barrier? It gives a message in the brain. It releases some message in the brain uh, saying I'm anxious, I'm depressed. Now the next question which arises in my mind is when you clean the gut then there is less stress is it true and if it is true I say yes so then what is the issue why people with clean gut are stressed so basically we are trying to understand where is the locus of control is it in the gut is it in the brain are we trying to say people who are who have good healthy habits who are physically mentally fit or just physically fit they are hitting the gym daily they are going for walk they are eating healthy so they are not stressed so basically there is a cybernetic loop it goes back and forth it's a paradox as people feel bad about gut they have a bad gut, they feel bad about it, then they clean it, they feel better, again they start feeling bad. So why is this happening? It is happening because stress is a combination of physiology and other factors. You can call it environmental factors. In large study, as conducted in 2018, scientists found evidence that stress-related disorders are significantly associated with subsequent autoimmune disorders. Now, why did they say that? 
because individuals diagnosed with stress related disorders were more likely to develop multiple autoimmune disease the increased rate of autoimmune disease was less significant among those individuals who are treated with ptsd as in everybody each one of us had at some point in time or life has encountered stress in form of personal loss financial loss uh, anything and then we were suffering from post traumatic stress disorder hardly few of us got diagnosed and went on to take a treatment as in went for a counseling session or a therapy session only those people could skip the autoimmune disease so the findings are consistent with previous evidences which link psychological stress and harmful life events to immune dysregulation so how does this immune dysregulation happens under stress what happens the activated autonomic nervous system plays a major immune function impairment we are stressed the nervous system is so nervous that it's all geared up to take on the war now the mind is so war pro the nervous system is so war pro that it is damaging the immune function and hence causing immune function impairment and what does that do it indirectly promotes inflammatory response now there was a research among 5 year old children and there was found an association between high psychological stress in the family and immune response we usually think the kid is small the baby is small they don't understand anything they don't understand that we are stressed they don't understand that we are fighting or we don't have money or we are stressed about the job which we lost but they do understand everything basically they are absorbing it like a cotton ball hence stress was uh, assessed among four domains serious life events parenting stress lack of social support and parental worries and i would as a child and adolescent counselor i would highlight this parental worry as the most important stress factor and what does the result indicate in indicates that psychological stress may cause not only immune suppression but may also cause an imbalance that may contribute to an autoimmune reaction against pancreatic cells so basically it is causing an autoimmune reaction against pancreatic cells and now what is happening the kid the babies are due to these major life events developing an immune response against diabetes related auto antigens and that is why diabetes is such a common common auto immune disorder many people don't even know that this is also an auto immune disorder it may also indicate auto immune reaction against insulin producing cells and when you enter the age bracket of 55 to 65 what happens when we evaluate stress when we evaluate depression level what do we find we find that natural killer cells actively is negatively affected we are unable to kill our own killer cells and it's in return killing us 
now which part of the body the next very important question which comes in my mind is which part of the body gets affected by stress so <clears throat> chronic stress causes the muscles of the body to be in a guarded state as if it's on a war and what does it trigger it triggers headache it triggers migraine it triggers area affected with uh, it uh, affects area as like shoulders neck head everything is affected and can it be present in the respiratory tract yes it blocks the airway between the nose and the lung by constricting the no uh, by constricting the lungs not the nose sorry and is eczema also um, autoimmune disorder yeah it is eczema is a kind of skin disease that stems from genetic mutation that affects the body's ability to make a protein called filaggrin now you have genetic cells which can give you eczema now how does it get triggered due to stress hormones called cortisol it is triggered so um, there was a research done in 900 pregnant mothers and the children and what do uh, what did they find they found that women with higher level of anxiety during pregnancy or before just before pregnancy had increased chances of having babies with eczema and the babies could get eczema as early as when they are just 6 to 8 months old now let's discuss alopecia areata alopecia areata is a again a autoimmune disorder what happens it's a chronic dermatological disorder in which people lose small or all the hair on the head and some parts of body it is a chronic inflammatory disease that affects hair follicles it is neither life threatening nor it is painful though there can be irritation as well as physical problems leading to loss of eyebrows and eyelashes and it in turn can keep you stressed it is called physical worry how do i look and due to stress the body's immune system is attacking hair follicles and causes hair loss and there is also apart from alopecia areata there is another uh, autoimmune disorder which is called telogen effluvium now what happens here in this the stress pushes large number of hair follicles into a resting phase go rest for ever rest in peace so even disease like schizophrenia which is considered as the biggest mental illness or the worst mental illness is also considered to be autoimmune disorder of a kind the vast majority of epidemiological studies have found there is a general association between autoimmunity and psychiatric disorders and additionally being diagnosed with schizophrenia increases the lifetime prevalence of multiple autoimmune disease so the recent meta analysis found that the risk of having an autoimmune disease was 55% higher among those with a prior diagnosis of psychotic disorder the associations with psychotic disorders have been found for a broad range of autoimmune diseases so if you are diagnosed with any kind of mental illness be it anxiety depression anything or maybe you remain undiagnosed and you are diagnosed with a autoimmune disorder 
so that means there is 55% chances that you already had a psychotic disorder which remain undiagnosed or diagnosed and hidden or suppressed and you get a autoimmune disorder in return so the original findings from the 1950s is i told you right i am not sure in the beginning of the episode that i started the episode with the finding which is been done in 2018 but this goes back to 1950 from where the original finding came and what does it say it says that there is a association between celiac disease and schizophrenia and what is the kind of association we are talking about it means that lower consumption of wheat had lower incidence rates of schizophrenia and beneficial effect on psychotic symptoms so why so uh, don't get confused if you are getting confused when we are talking about psychotic disorders we are talking about mental illnesses it can be of any kind from minor to major uh, when we are referring to schizophrenia we are talking about the highest level of mental illness and what does it suggest it suggests that if you eat less wheat okay you might feel better as per the research okay so people having celiac disease are found to be schizophrenic or people having schizophrenia have found to be having celiac disease it's interrelated to some extent we cannot guarantee on the percentage because i couldn't find the percentage but to some extent it is related so you can try on your own if you are suffering from uh, mental depression or anxiety you can cut on the wheat intake if you are a wheat eater it is important to note that celiac disease might majorly remain undiagnosed particularly who all and everybody who have debuted <laughs> with uh, psychotic symptoms we never ever doubt on the chapatis we eat so that is why we remain undiagnosed so let's try i am also going to try now i'll quickly highlight on autoimmune disorders which are associated with neuropsychiatric symptoms and what are those such as depression and anxiety okay so i found that uh, the autoimmune disorder which is called multiple sclerosis so data suggests that 39% of people having multiple sclerosis are either depressed or anxious or have a psychotic disorder people having lupus and this data ranges from 21% to 95% of patients with lupus have a psychotic disorder again autoimmune disorder which is called uh, hypothyroid the most common cause is psychotic disorder we already spoke about diabetes type 1 but how does it happen it happens due to the presence of gad antibodies and what does this gad antibodies do they are linked with neurological problems and this crosses the brain blood barrier <clears throat> it is in your gut it crosses the brain blood barrier it goes in your brain and it sends you message i am depressed i am anxious i am not feeling well again uh, let's talk about autoimmune disorder which is called encephalitis it is characterized by the presence of nsabs antibodies and what are the symptoms the symptoms include psychiatric and cognitive alterations it gives you scissors and it gives you movement disorder 
now uh, let's talk about a uh, dysregulated immune system what is a dysregulated immune system a dysregulated immune system basically it is a dysregulated balance between the t cells and the th17 cells and that is the reason and the cause behind several autoimmune disorders and it is also found in mental illness so same thing this dysregulation of these two cell is the cause behind the autoimmune disorder and the mental illnesses or the psychotic disorders what happens when this dysregulation happens this dysregulation happens as we say, said it causes anti inflammatory cytokines what does uh, anti inflammatory cytokine do it leads to abnormal responses to common infection and these abnormal inf uh, responses to common infections like viral flu etc increases the risk of autoimmune diseases it is thought that one of the most important trigger of developing autoimmune diseases is infection have you seen somebody who is like almost every time infectious for many of the individuals autoimmune disease it is uh what do i say so uh, there is a finding that many schizophrenia patients have a prior hospital contact for infection before much before getting diagnosed with a autoimmune disorder or a schizophrenia so it's all starts with infection are you getting um, frequent viral fevers keep a check so being exposed to viral or bacterial infection is known to increase the permeability of the blood brain barrier and it also uh, it is also found that this infection during pregnancy increases the risk of schizophrenia in the offspring now i think i have uh, explain how it works so you get a infection once and then you get a different infection and a different infection so you always you are infected frequently be it bacterial infection be it fungal infection be it any infection and then it attacks your immune system and then after a certain point of time it gives you abnormal abnormal responses and then it creates increased inflammation and then what happens it gives you autoimmune disorder and psychotic disorders now a new study showed that maternal infections before and after pregnancy increases mental illness so keep a check on all the infections you get just prior to or during pregnancy so both schizophrenia and autoimmune disorder are known to be highly heredi hereditable it's genetic you are inheriting it so we started our conversation the, from the beginning of the episode we are talking about gut bacteria now let's go back to gut bacteria before we can conclude this episode so what happens there's a gastrointestinal tract and what does it contain it contains was vast amount of bacteria it contains phyla it contains other microorganisms and there are genes and everything is collectively called microbiome so there is 100 times more genetic material in your gut than elsewhere and as early as 1953 interest in gastrointestinal inflammation in psychosis was raised when a group of researchers found what 
they found that in patients of schizophrenia which is a kind of mental illness 50% had gastritis 88% had enteritis and 92% had colitis so now i am in the na uh, final concluding part and what does it say it says that whatever i was anticipating and assuming and trying to find out i found that i was right i found that psychological stress such as physical abuse sexual abuse emotional or psychological abuse neglect parental death bullying be it in childhood be it in later stage has been associated with increased risk of psychotic disorders and subsequent risk of autoimmune disorders so i would ask you to write to me in case you have any query in case you don't believe in what i say in case you have any question and i would like to answer all your questions related to mental disorders or uh, its connection with autoimmune disorder so thank you so much listening to me and before i go i should do the rituals which is right now the time is 1:43 pm it is uh, delhi gurgaon india and i am preeti pande and this is 18th episode of uh, our uh, podcast episode 18th episode of our podcast which is a playlist which is called go unedited so if you haven't heard any of our podcast episode i would request you to go back listen to few and let me know did you like it or not so thank you and i'll come back again with a new podcast episode and the time which i exactly took is 27 minutes thank you so much bye take care